And when you, you finally arrived, you didn't know where you were going, of course. No, they didn't give us a time scale or anything. <laughs> they did not. They just put us up in the train, whatever we wanted to take, we could take. And that, oh, I tell you what, there was, there were two buckets there. <laughs> Clean water was never there. Uh, we never had water from then on for a, quite a few days till we get up out of the train. You see, a lot of people died during the journey. And first the dead bodies were thrown out. <laughs> and, and then they put a sort of things on top of them, and we had to go out. And Father's last words were, Whatever the Germans tell you, always take the difficult option. Father always said that the Germans are funny that way. If you can go by, uh, do this, and it's easy. And it was a very wise suggestion, because when we got off the train, the Germans said, those who can walk, can walk. Those who can't walk, there's uh, buses there ambulances, and you can take the ambulance. And of course, the ambulance went straight to the gas chamber. We never seen them again. I don't know where. I don't know where the gas chamber, but I didn't even know there was such a thing. When we got off, it was women to the right, men to the left. And that's the last time I spoke to my father. But he, he only said, remember what I told you. And we walked with my mother. And those who couldn't walk went by ambulance. We never seen them again. I, I don't know, maybe they survived, but we never seen them. We were put into barracks. They just put us all in, filled up the barracks. There was... There was really no room very much more than just to sit. And my mother sat and she put her arm around us and just come beside me. And that was all the room there was in the barrack. You, we couldn't lie down. There was no there was no beds, but there was not even enough room to sit. To be quite honest, I don't know whether we got something to drink. We definitely didn't get food, but I think next day we got a sort of something that they called a roll, but sort of it was a very heavy sort of thing. But no, I think we got it on the same day. I, I can't really, I don't want to say anything that's wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. It was so difficult to get used to not being able, you know, not lie down not, the whole night. We were petrified. We just cuddled our mother and we didn't know where to go. And they closed the door and that was it. We spent the night till next morning and then you know, things started. They started. They put us out of the barracks in front and started counting us. They, they counted sometimes for hours and hours. I can tell you it was called Sailor Pell. And I said, we went out and luckily the weather was, I don't mean wonderful, but at least we survived the night, you know. When we arrived in Auschwitz, right there out of the train, And then we, we, they were first putting us into first a different place. I've forgotten about that already. And we got into these barracks and we went, for, we had to go forward and forward. And then when we were all in, in from the train, they said, everybody get undressed. <laughs> And we just looked at each other because we, <laughs> we just didn't know what it, uh, we couldn't believe that you get undressed, but you actually had to take every bit of clothes off. 
and there were sort of soldiers with dogs around. And I said, anybody who doesn't take the clothes off, we will uh, let the dog know. And we were petrified to take the clothes off. And there we were, and we had to go forward. And there was a little place you went up, and you had to put our arms out, and they cut our hairs off. We, they shone the whole face, anything. So when we got off there, we didn't recognize our mother, because without clothes, without hair, <laughs> you just look and you can't recognize anybody, you know, because there's no signs, what they were like. But... <laughs> So how, how long were you in Auschwitz for, Judith? Do you Not remember? very long, but I can't tell you because really time flew. We were what we called sailor bell in the morning. They were counting us, and then in the middle of the day we got something in a something that was to eat. It was really unbelievably bad, but you had to eat it because we got nothing else. And I don't think we were there very long. I think it was just a few weeks when one day they counted us like that again. And there was a officer called Dr. Mengele, you know, he counted us. And we had to walk in front of him. And he says, you go to the right, we go to the left. And we realized it halfway through that those who could walk, could walk to the right, it was the right thing. The left was all those who either was ill or sick or whatever. And then we were all to the right and they put us to a place and it was written outside, gas kama. We got such a fright, but and we were the ones who were the better ones, you know, like the well, but inside there was not gas. It was hot water. We could walk and uh, we could wash ourselves. <laughs> and because we were really filthy, <laughs> you know. And Did you know about the gas chambers when you were there? No, I didn't. I had no idea. But it was a very frightening thing to read. Mm -hmm. It was, I think, the gas chamber. But when we were there, it was hot water. And actually, we were chosen for for Lipstadt. Then uh, there was hot water. We got dressed, and they give us all our coats back. Of course, it wasn't our own coat. It was just as they were coats, and if it fitted, they put it on you. You know, and and they put us into a transport. It was another train, but this time the train was clean. You know, like it was washed, and that's when we got to. Eventually, we got to. That was another week's journey, but we got some food on the way. You know, it it was the same food that it was a. It was sort of a like a soup plate, but it wasn't soup. You know, and you you must have felt. Huge we were relief. very hungry, but by that time, I don't know, we were so pleased to be alive. And did, did you realize people were being killed in Auschwitz when you, you were never, there? I, I personally was never realized. I never realized. But maybe some people did. I, I really can't tell you. <laughs> Especially not from such a distance. It was over 70 years ago. And how long were you in Lipstadt? In Lipstadt we were, now wait a second, I think it was all around August, the same year. So we left, we weren't too long in Auschwitz, but in Lipstadt we worked in the ammunition factory. And that's when you know, my watchmaking came in very handy, you know. Well, that was, your father was right? Yes, yes, was very right.